please work. Yep, we're good. There was an update to OBS. I don't want it to be a problem. Okay, we're good, we're good, we're good. Here we go. The show begins in three, two, one. Have you ever tried to indulge in all-consuming urge to kill when you don't have opposable thumbs? I can make a cherry pie in the twinkling of an eye. Do the bees know they make honey for you? This is the morning stream. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to TMS. It's the morning stream for Tuesday, June 20th, 2023. It's a lot of 20s. Got to keep them straight, you know. Uh, I'm Scott Johnson. That's Brian Ibbett. Hi, Brian Ibbett. Oh, hi, Scott. How are you? I'm fine. You're back from Vegas, and that's good. Juneteenth <sighs> is over. We, we, we took yesterday off. and We'd like to say that it was entirely for Juneteenth observance. <laughs> but, you know, Brian got home late, and I was like, I, why don't we I just got, honor I, the I holiday? I slipped under the sheets uh, back in my own bed at 2.30 a.m. That's, so. that's late, dude. That's, that's late. It's really late. It's and it's really not just late. late. It's late. When you've been on a plane and you've yes. been having stuff going on in Vegas, that's a lot of stuff. So, you know, we want to be, we, when people ask us, did you guys observe Juneteenth? We'll say, yes, we did. <laughs> we did. As I observed a lot of it from a sleeping position, but uh... <laughs> it's all good. We're happy to be here, though. So uh, welcome back from yeah. Las Vegas. We'll get into the, the nitty and the gritty of your visit uh, here shortly. Because I know there are stories. There are always there are, stories. There is nitty and gritty. Yeah. Both things. Always yeah. stories. But before we do anything else, uh, we failed to do this because we weren't here yesterday. So we're going to do it now. Stand back and check your personal belongings. It's time for the morning form. That's right. The morning form. What is that you say? Well, normally we do it on Mondays. But we open up the floodgates to a chance uh, for you uh, to win prizes. That's all it is, really. It's just winning prizes. And sometimes it's like a poll. But sometimes it's just a question, and today is one of those days. But before we get into that, I'll tell you who won last week. It was which Diablo class did you start with, or will you, or did you? It's been a couple of weeks. I can't remember if it was will or did. Uh, <laughs> or did, it looks like. Anyway, uh, we got a whole bunch of answers, and the number one answer with kind of evenly split with the top three, 16.7% really? uh, Necromancer, which is where I am, uh -huh. uh, Sorcerer, same percentage, and Rogue at just below that 16.4 percent that was me That's uh, what i started with nicely done rogue's very popular right now uh druid at 8.2 and barbarian at 6.5 uh then there's a bunch cool. of fake stuff like glape uh i don't play diablo never played it uh i played a wizard in diablo jedi someone chose so plenty of other <laughs> options. Zelda, someone said they played Zelda. Zelda. Yes, yeah. I played that. Well, I, that's that's really what I could have answered. Even though I did play Diablo Four, I I've been playing way more Zelda. Yeah. Here's another one. I'm Jewish, so we don't have a hell. That's a good one. I like that a lot. <laughs> also, is that true? Do the Jews do the Jews not observe a sort of a hell type joint? Uh, hell is a deli that doesn't have good Cornish beef. Or corn beef, Cornish beef, corn beef. See, only 16% Jewish. I don't get the jokes quite right. That's right. And before you send Brian emails, 16% Jewish. All right, calm down. 16% Jewish. I'm allowed to say it. He can make some of those jokes. It's fine. <laughs> anyway, two ported Gefilte by video fish. games. That's, you want to know hell, it's gefilte fish. Somebody chose Billy Barty. It's a weird thing to, to put oh, in here. Oh, Billy Barty. That's a great... Uh, the great, great starting poll. class of the uh, Diablo 4. <laughs> Turd Ferguson, podcaster, your mom. That's a good one. Anyway, a whole bunch of you uh, replied. Thank you all for that. And uh, we'd like to award a winner. Uh, this week's winner goes to, I don't know how to say it, so I'll just say, I'll spell it sort of, T-C-I-O-T-D-I-T. -I -I like, yeah. kadikta hot tot dit Ah, Whoops. congratulations. Right? You're the one. You're the guy. Whoever that, how would you say that, Brian? Would you say it phonetically or not? Probably not. T chowed it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, it does kind chowed of it. Italian chow in there. You're right. Yeah, the CIO, CIO chow, or cho, cho. Cho, to cho. The, like, the end of, of, of frappuccio. Frappuccio. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, this person will know who they are because of this ridiculous mingling of their name. Uh, I'll send you an email if I don't hear from you, and we will get you hooked up with your prizes. So, congratulations there. 
Uh, this week's morning form is your favorite junk food slash guilty food choices. Now, the fun part of this is it's not a poll. It's just Ooh. your answers. Okay. Just your answers. Look at that. And you can say whatever you want in there. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Um, and I'm sure we'll get some real dumb ideas, but you know, if you're, yeah. if you're serious about the, the, the question, you'll answer things like, Oh, I like a pizza on a Friday night or I like a whatever, whatever. But some of you I know oh. are going to say some really weird stuff and I look forward to reading it. So go Excellent. to frogpants.com slash the morning form and you too could win a frog pants fun pack just by entering. You don't have to do anything special. All right. You put in your email, but we don't use them for anything. They don't get saved. We just chuck them when we're done. I don't. I don't even know. I don't even know how many emails have been sent. <laughs> we don't sell them to China. No, don't we don't do any of that. Uh, we just uh, we just reply to the one winner, and that's it. So our our winner, by the way, uh, is in the chat oh. from last time. Lisa Horton, and she says it's a it's an acronym, and it stands for the curious incident of the dog in the. Oh, but then leaves us hanging. Dot. We need to know more. What? Hanging. I guess it's the curious incident of the dog in the Gmail. It's like she's in the <laughs> <laughs> she's in cough. she's in the uh, she's in the ceiling uh, telling a joke and then falls through like in uh, that <laughs> like one movie. John Bender. Yeah, yes. John Bender. We I never got that. the end of that joke. Never got it because nope. I think it was like a wasn't it a a um, impro improvised deal from what's his face? Oh right, they made yeah they made it up. There was no answer or there was no <laughs> yeah uh, I think there thing. Was no punchline. Yeah. The, and the woman says to the duck, whoa, shit. And he falls through the ceiling right on top of uh, Molly Ringwald. That's the one. That's the time. Uh, okay. That's all done and, and done with. Oh, uh, frogtance.com slash the morning form. One more time is where you'll go. Just click it. You can do it on yeah. mobile or desktop. Doesn't matter. And uh, let your thoughts be heard. Brian, let's talk about Las Vegas. Oh, you were there for I... a trippy trip, McTrippy, sir and son. And, I did. Uh, I did went on a trippy trip. Yeah, basically the the the. The trip centered around a concert uh, at the Pearl Theater in the Palms, uh, seeing Elvis Costello um, headlining, uh, Nick Lowe opening, uh, two favorite artists of mine, seeing them together. Second time I've seen the two of them together, they they came through Denver and, and uh, saw them at the Levitt Pavilions last year. But um, Nick Lowe was a, kind of one of Elvis Costello's uh, early inspirations. And... Mm. Uh, but the two of them, you know, shared a record label for a while. They were, I think, both Stiff Records or, oh, I can't remember the deal. Chris Brown is going to correct me on all of this stuff. But uh, what a great show. And, of course, uh, they share a song. The The song What's So Funny About Peace, Love, and Understanding was originally done by a band called Brinsley Schwartz, uh, headed, fronted uh, by Nick Lowe. He mm -hmm. wrote the song. And then Elvis Costello covered it very differently from the original and turned it into a huge huge hit nice and yeah. they were on stage get... together and they were looking good did we get a lot of vibrato no, that, was, of, uh... that was the weird thing we actually never got them on stage together they did levitt pavilion last year but i thought for sure nick lowe would come out oh it would did they no they didn't they never yeah nick lowe left the stage and and uh, didn't come back for a uh, for like an encore with uh, elvis yeah uh weird but yes, lots of lots of vibrato. You get the uh, the pretty much the the Elvis Costello. Elvis, I know this world is killing you. Anyway, I, I was worried you can that do, that you dude... can do any song uh, as Elvis Costello. If you I'm like. just always worried Hello, some some organ's gonna me. come flopping out of his mouth while he's doing that. <laughs> Because it's so like, rrr, rrr, rrr. it's just like pulling, pulling hard on those chords, man. He, well, you know what? He is a uh, he is a, a singer, an artist that uh, does not follow the conventional rules of what a an American Idol slash the voice pop singer should sound like. He's got his own thing, just yeah, like my like favorite. Dylan, like yeah. uh, like any number, uh, like the dude from Crash Test Dummies, like all these people who have. A unique voice on rock and roll that you don't even need to be told who the who the performer is. You're like, oh, that's Elvis Costello. I've never heard this yeah. song before, but that's clearly Elvis Costello. All of the legends, as far as I'm concerned, have that quality. Nobody Agreed. sounds Agreed. like uh, American Idol unless they're like flash in the pan pop star. That's not gonna. No one's gonna know about them in 20 years. Exactly. It's the way it works. Yeah. Exactly. Anyway. So uh, so that was the the center the centerpiece of the uh, the weekend, and the good news was. That took place Saturday night, which kept us away from the Strip, 
on Saturday night, which was the home of the the Vegas Golden Knights uh, uh, COVID sharing party and uh, parade. Uh, <laughs> Which mm. <laughs> took place pretty much right in front of the hotels where we were staying. So we we basically got off the strip. We hung out the Rio. We hung out the Palms for a little while and uh, had a blast over there. I found a bar that had a uh, had a shark chopped into three pieces and mounted in in resin above mm-hmm. the bar. Mm-hmm. That looked really cool. That sounds awesome. Uh, but that first day we uh, we did end up at the Rio for a little bit to see. Uh, we went with a, another guy. So it was me, Chris Brown, and a guy named Kush. It's, his real name is Eddie, but his nickname is Kush. And I guess you come from Nittina, New Jersey. Chris Brown's listing all his friends. Oh, we got Kush and Moose and and Avocado Boy and and uh, Johnny Fingers and da da da. He's listing all these people from uh, New Jersey. Yeah. But Kush was with us, and Kush's niece, uh, her his, his uh, Kush's brother lives in Vegas, and uh, his daughter was competing in the World Chess. Uh, youth championships which were going on at the Rio and so we ended up over there I'm like oh my god this is so cool I want to see like like uh, Queen's Gambit looking stuff with the giant board where they're they're looking at the small board and moving the oh, bishop to knight six and they move that piece to where it is on the big board so everybody in the crowd can see it they didn't have it Aww. basically all these kids were playing against each other on little round tables and and uh oh they're uh, like preliminaries or something like uh like preliminaries there might have been yeah there might have been a later championship or something but i was really really hoping for like a like a big stage with lights and whole, you know over the top vegasy kind of thing that would have been cool so, to uh, see yeah i, would love I sent that. you a, a text with a photo i said uh at one point i just yelled oh my god over there's bobby fisher and when all the kids looked over i took the king <laughs> i saw that yeah here you go, chat. Look at this photo. I didn't, I didn't really. No, I went and bought course, that. Of course you did. I bought it for a dollar. They had a they had a bookstore that had a bunch of books and then eighteen different models of those timers that you know you make your move and then you hit your timer and it counts for the other player. Sure. And uh, and I was like, oh, there's like a big Tupperware bin filled with loose chess pieces. You could choose any ones you want. There were buck each. They were way down the bottom. It's my totem now. My my uh, inception totem, mm. so I know if I'm in the dream world. That's right. And uh, I decided, oh, I could buy this really big pond, but no, I think somebody's going to think uh, it's a butt plug. So I'm going to go ahead and get the king because no one's going to think that, that that's a that that's a butt plug. Well, nobody nobody with any care for the interior of their colon. <laughs> yes, that's that. true. I guess that's Vegas. Anything goes. I guess so. Well, so hold on a second. The guy you went with, whose niece was involved in this. Yes. Did Kush. he do? Do we know how she? did in the in the competition she she um lost she she didn't do super well she (laughs) well it's cool i don't know if she lost she they played five games like it's a a five whatever those it's not single elimination each kid was guaranteed at least five games and uh i know that she at least lost two i don't know how she did with the rest but you know hopefully hopefully she uh Hopefully she won the three that we didn't hear about. How's that? Yeah, that's all right. Plus, I'm guessing it's stiff competition. It's probably, uh, you know, it's a big deal. That's why she went. It is a it is a big deal. Oh, my gosh. These kids, you look around, and, and uh, we decided while we were over there, because we had a, a room, a free room over there as well, thanks to Kush's brother. And so I brought my swim stuff changed and went down to the Rio pool for a while. And let me tell you, real easy to spot the chess players at a... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Las Vegas hotel pool out in the sunshine. Because <laughs> mm, they walk by yeah. and you hear them sizzle. Like, <laughs> they actually make a sizzling sound as they it go. Sounds by. like bacon getting being cooked. Wow, that's awesome. So uh, 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 no, no yeah. sign. You didn't happen to see uh, Penn and or Teller walking around or doing anything. Did not see either of them walking around the uh, uh, the Darn facilities. Uh, nope, that's a nope. shame. No celebrity sightings. Um, we also went to a thing I heard about called Flight Club, and I'm going to talk about Flight Club because Flight Club does not have a rule about not talking about Flight Club. Mm. This is at, oh shoot, Venetian? I think it's at the Venetian. And it is a darts bar that now will be added to my um, uh, TMS Vegas must-do list. Oh, I can't believe I didn't send you this. I got to send you something. Hold on a second. Send it. Let's see it. All right, I'm sending you a link to 
a page. Now, I'm going to do some setup while I send you this link to this page. Sounds good. Because it's going to uh, uh, it's, it's going to require some setup, but you'll have something that you'll probably want to show on screen. Okay. All right. So, All right. Flight Club is a darts bar. You get your own little little uh, area to sit down, have your drinks, and then a dartboard and some darts. And it's uh, it has a bunch of different kind of party style games. And it keeps track of your score for you. It sees where the dart goes, and you don't have to like write down or, or mar- make marks on a chalkboard or whatever. I'm excited people get to see about- Chris Brown, by the way, for the first time, like an actual photo of the guy. This is great. I thought you'd see I No, I'd seen, seen him. him. I just don't know if the chat has. I don't think the chat room's ever seen Oh, yeah, maybe the chat hasn't. Well, no. underneath the players, there are action replays. And, and these are the games that we played. We played Demolition, Killer, and Shanghai. And it's like Demolition is, you know, throw darts and knock down the points until you get to zero, et cetera. Uh, the action replays happen when you score the winning point. It, it it captures video of you the whole time. And when you score the winning point, it captures the slow motion replay of you hitting the board. <laughs> is, it an actual, the board. is it a shot of your actual thing or a recreation like CG it looks the, like? The or dart something. going into the board is CG recreation. But it is where he hit it, though. It is exactly where he hit it. Like, it knows within a within an eighth of an inch, man. It, That's it cool. knows exactly where it hits. That's cool as hell. So you can see us like <laughs> sitting there in our in our uh, area, like playing darts. This place is a blast. It's it's I think it's like twenty bucks a person, but uh, this is on the this is now on the TMS Vegas. List. Never even heard this, of this. This is in the Venetian. It's in the Venetian. Yeah. Oh man, I gotta definitely check this out. There's Brian yes. checking one. So fun. Yeah, you can see one of mine. Well, yeah, you're doing a little hat. You did a little hat tip there at the end. That oh yeah, great. Well, er- yeah, that was great. <laughs> Where did where did they go? So you were all sitting there watching Chris, but then they they disappeared when you threw a dart. They're off to the oh yeah, because they went to uh, they went to go have a smoke, and I continued oh. playing. Like, well, we paid for ninety minutes. I'm gonna play your both of you players, and so yeah, <laughs> this is <laughs> had great. a couple great shots. Last dart so you had the highest and... three dart score. Uh, Chris I got did. the most kills, and Killer, yeah. Kush. Oh no, Kush isn't on here. You got also got the highest three dart score again in, on the Shanghai. In Shanghai. Yeah, this is cool. Yeah. It's so damn cool. And you can see me like rushing to get my phone to capture because I didn't know they were going to send me a link with all of our quote unquote greatest hits. Yeah, that, I mean, uh, how would you know? Yeah. It seems like just darts, right? But yeah, this page is, is great. Like it gives you like, all right, here's who who did the best, and here's like you know, that's oh, it's great. great. It's so fun. It's very so cool. Flight yeah. Flight Club, totally will, doing it. I will definitely go to this. That seems rad. Uh, what else? We got uh, the gambling. So remember how I had all that luck during TNS Vegas, and I just couldn't lose. Like playing craps, I was winning, and doing you know the slots, I was winning, and everything. everything yeah, you made a doing. made a fair amount of money, if I remember right. I made it, a fair amount of money. I made sure that on this trip, I gave it all back uh, to the casino. Yeah, um, that's how they win. Yeah, they get you. The, this yeah. is the this is the week that like the this is the day that. Bobby Frankenberger needed to go after all that craps winning because he kind of got hooked and he thought, oh my God, it's always like this. Mm. I'm going to play craps all the time. Yeah, it doesn't always go that well. And this last weekend for me was the was the opposite. Do you ever get conspiratorial about it and go, they knew I was here and they're, now I'm back and they're no, going to get me now? Okay, good, good. That they don't have, you... They're not going to spend the thousands of dollars to get my, my $350 back. <laughs> They mark you back in, Mar- in uh, exactly. April. Exactly. It's like, like mm. Brian Ibbett's back. All right, uh, everybody, uh, you, positions, everyone, positions. This is what we train <laughs> for, okay? You ready for this? Exactly. That's great. Uh, let's see. Last night, uh, no, I'm sorry, Sunday night, so Father's Day night, we were flying back. Late night flight, right? Basically, our flight left there at um, 9.30. We got back to Denver at uh, uh, quarter to one, no, uh, one o'clock. Yeah, I texted Brian, and it was late when I texted yeah. you, and you said, <laughs> "I said I think are you just are you home yet? Are you home and safe and everything?" Yeah. It's like yeah. I just landed. Our flight was late. Like you sounded <laughs> even through text, I could yeah. feel the tired. just exhausted. Yeah. Well, and and part of that was um, <laughs> sitting there in the Harry Reid Airport. So we're waiting for our flight, and uh, we're watching 
a couple two two different families, both with two different uh, parenting techniques. Uh, over here, you've got the dad whose daughter apparently, whose twenty two year old daughter apparently walked away and left her flo- phone plugged in next to her sister Uh-oh. in the waiting area to charge. Uh oh. Um, and they're making the announcement like, hey, in just a few minutes, we're going to be going begin our boarding process here at Southwest. And they do that whole explanation thing. And uh, and this dad is like, she's so dumb. Where Who leaves her phone behind and, and walks off the airport when she knows we're going to be boarding soon? And he's all pissed off. And, and CB and I look at each other and CB goes, She's gonna, she's gonna be back just in time. She'll be back in plenty of time, mm-hmm. and she sure, she totally was. Of course she was, but not after listening to her, you know, her dad like uh, ripping a new one. That makes me mad. Uh, then we had this other parenting um, nightmare. This guy uh, with his two kids, and they were they were uh, want Burger King to eat on the plane. Poor kids, Vegas. It, you know, it's like ten o'clock at night, and Dad's putting whoppers into you. Jeez, yeah, Louise, it's a lot. Uh, well, uh, we're getting, we're going down the jetway, and apparently the kid did not want a whopper; he wanted an Impossible Burger. Oh, what kid wants an Impossible Burger? I but, don't know. You better have a. We, yeah. you, you must have a young taste for the fake eight-year-old eight kid, burger. and he's saying, "I want an Impossible Burger," mm. and uh, and Dad had finally. Walking down the jetway, had enough, and he erupted into like a steaming volcano of, of <laughs> anger. And uh, he was about eight or eight or nine people in front of me walking down the jetway to get on the plane. And the couple right in front of me, just listening to this, just kind of look at each other, eyes wide open, silently look at each other like, are you hearing this? Mm. And at that point I said, hey, I'm having a great Father's Day. Thanks for asking. My son's 250 miles away. <laughs> Do you think the kid likes Impossible Burgers just because it sounds cool? Because I would have been that he, way. That's exactly right. It's like, oh my god, I'm going to eat something impossible. Yeah, they don't actually. <laughs> they're not like little vegan kids or anything. They're no, just like, no, I'm pretty sure that uh, that he just wanted because it, it sounded cool. And they yeah. could have just said, oh, yeah, actually, we did get you an Impossible Burger. Yeah, just lie to him. Just lie to him. Not kid. even exactly. Yeah, tell him later when he's 18. You can say, you can admit to it. But for now, let it let it ride. We're on a plane. Gosh dang it. It's an impossible burger. It tastes like a real burger, doesn't it, Junior? Oh, it sure does, Dad. Thanks for the impossible burger. Done. How impossible. (laughs) Uh, But the the, the highlight of the trip, well, one of the highlights, everything was a highlight. It was so much fun. Um, But one of of my favorite parts of the trip was um, getting to hang out with James and Svet in their part of the world, Boulder City. They came, picked me up, and then brought me back to uh, Boulder City. Nevada, which is uh, uh, just this cool little, no gambling little town, um, 30 minutes away from Vegas, just up the highway, and uh, there's just so much, uh, it's just it's so much fun stuff to do there. We, we went to uh, a beer garden, we went to another place that, a uh, little restaurant, and uh, uh, we did some... Uh, uh, did some truck food truck uh, burgers, which were incredible. Yum. And then I went and did karaoke with one of their friends, Mikkel, because uh, she didn't want to go up alone, and I, I certainly wasn't about to go up alone. And uh, uh, it was great. And maybe, maybe James will release the video of the uh, uh, of the whole ordeal. I don't know. What, don't know. something on the internet? Yeah, he might have recorded me... Uh, I might have recorded me doing uh, doing a song. Oh, what is this? This is uh, let's see. So there was a beer garden called Zombie or Beer Zombies. Beer Zombies. I don't know why it's called Beer Zombies. There's not anything zombie zombieish about it. But, okay. So wait, um, they just they just consider themselves like I don't know what I don't know what that means. Beer Zombies. Just beer super zombies. into beer. It's just a big, nice, open air beer garden with food trucks and a gazebo and and. Uh, Oh, such a such a cool place, and no, there's no gambling in town. So it's like, you go there and you are just you are, uh, you have no distractions. Your oh. only vices can be drinking. And that pizza, what is this pizza on a giant wooden plate thing? Oh, what is yeah. that? Oh, yeah. wow! All right, yeah, I'm going there. Really cool place. So it's. Uh, I don't even drink. Uh, I'm going. <laughs> <laughs> I definitely yeah. eat, you know. That's yeah, the, great. it's it's the site of the Boulder Dam, and because uh, they have the Boulder Dam Film Festival every year and stuff. So nice. Uh, 
Boulder City. Go check oh, look, it they out. sell uh, beer zombies dad hats. You can buy a dad yeah. hat. Yeah. Yeah. Now, here's a problem I got. Okay. This tell just me. reminded tell me, me of problem. something. They. Oh, I don't wear. I'm not wearing a hat today. They. Their. Their definition of a dad hat is that as a hat with a curve on it, the kind that you and I would yes. wear here and there. Yes. Yes. I'm sorry. Don't. It's not a dad hat. That's just a hat that we wore. That's a baseball <laughs> hat. Just because it isn't flat and stupid looking doesn't make it a nor. It's a normal ass hat. <laughs> That's what they. Right. Exactly. Yes. I hate that distinction. It's like, oh, what do you got? Oh, you old man with his old hat. Oh, Shut yeah. up. It's a- be, he's got a curve on his brim. Must be a dad. Am I right? Like, do you guys watch baseball? Those guys are 22 years old running around in dad hats. <laughs> Give me a break. Anyway. Yeah. Uh, well, that's good. I'm glad yeah. you had a good time, dude. That's Yeah, great. really good time. And uh, uh, looking forward to a trip back out there in uh, in September with Barry and uh, Tanner and Alex. And, uh, That'll be a good time. Tristan and whoever. Yep. Um, It'll be a good time. I may be there in October. There's some talk. We'll see. I don't know. Well, why October? Why not September when we're when we're Because September still? is my or no, August. Oh shit. When is my trip? Oh yeah, so, you've got your I don't know when that thing. is. Whenever that is, and then the other reason is my niece and Kim are going for a whole thing. It's a whole thing. I don't ah, know. Okay. Yet. It's all just up. Just keep air. in mind in November they're doing the whole Formula One racing thing and and, and stuff is just gonna get worse Ooh. and worse and worse. How were the ho- <laughs> were the hockey fan uh, conglomeration? Was that enough to make you want to die wasn't, or wasn't really bad? Actually, it wasn't bad at all. Because I mean all the hockey fans are, are are there and the locals aren't gonna go to uh to the strip until the parade. So Yeah. It actually wasn't wasn't bad at all. They just have a lot of construction going on for preparing the strip for Formula One racing. I guess they have it for ten years. Oh, uh, so it's gonna be it's gonna be a nightmare there for ten years. And the MSG Sphere is get, trying to get built before all that starts. The Fontainebleau Hotel is trying to get uh, uh, completed before all that starts. So it's just a there's a mad dash going on in Vegas. It's a cluster. Um, Chris can con- correct us on this, uh, Mazzula, if, if I say this wrong, but I think they also said they're going to shut down all of the um, pedestrian overpass stuff, like the oh, bridges and the everything. Race? Yeah, that. Well, during during however long the race season goes. Is oh, it ju- really? Because it's because it's a it's a it's a chunk of t- time, right? It's not just like one race. It's like days or longer. Right? I don't know how those, um, I don't know how F one works. I have no idea. I don't either. I don't either. I'm speaking out of but out it wouldn't of surprise either. me because those overpasses go right over um go right over the course and it feels like uh people could throw something onto the onto the course like yeah. a banana. A banana peel or a uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> what is a, a mushroom? Uh, what are some other <laughs> Mario Kart things? I just can't think wanna... of a. I can't think of anything else I'm going to avoid more in November than that. Honestly, yeah. I'm never yeah. going there during that. That sounds insane. If you live around there, fine, but whew, I don't want to. Yeah, I know that he told he, the, the Mizzoula online said that the pedestrian bridges were closed for the parade, and I'm pretty sure that was the that was the same reason. Oh too. yeah, yeah, yeah. So some so if they did it for that, they're definitely doing it for the race because nobody if they. Somebody throw their half drink, uh, freaking giant tall, looks like a lady's leg drink they bought on the strip. They throw that <laughs> over there into the middle of the F one race. Exactly, I mean, come on. exactly. Yeah, Some, somebody could do that. I think even the they might even be closing the sidewalks because they want to sell tickets to this thing, and they can't have some schmuck who's wandering out of his hotel at Casino Royale mm-hmm. for for the twenty five dollar room night. Yeah. Going, hey, hey, look, I'm seeing the Formula F1. <laughs> and I wonder if rooms, so rooms on a in a in a in a strip hotel that oh, yeah. overlook that race are probably going to go for ridiculous thousands right yeah. now. Already, already up to like, well, somebody was saying 800, 850 a night, uh, low low end. And that's low end. So that's like, right. if even if you had to stay in that horrible flamingo, because it's those rooms are bad. They're horrible in there. At the Flamingo? Yeah, but I'll bet those are even going for a bunch because I bet they're they right are. there. Yeah. Yeah. Right there on the strip. Wow. The Link. Yeah, the oh, the Link. I saw the rooms at Harris. Harris uh, rooms weren't too bad. The the worst room I ever stayed in in Vegas, and I haven't stayed I haven't stayed in Circus Circus since I was a kid, so I can't speak to that. Yeah. But the yeah. worst one I ever stayed in by far was um Flamingo. It's really bad. 
that was really? the 90s wow. and it was a dump in the yeah, 90s never never stayed in there the, the worst one i've stayed in uh was the link it took tristan there for his 21st birthday and he's like well where i said where do you want to stay and he's like well, let's stay somewhere mid strip so we've got access to everything and i had free i think i had comp rooms for for the link and i was like you know what never stayed there then why not let's you know let's 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 be right next to where all that stuff is in that promenade area, that link promenade. Yeah. And uh, it was, you know what, totally fine. The room was was absolutely nothing to speak of. It looked like, it really looked like a dorm room with a bathroom, basically. Oh, weird. Yeah. But, um, <laughs> uh, but we were, we, we didn't care because we basically, you know, right here we've got all this stuff in the Link Promenade across the street. We've got Caesars in the Forum, and then we've got Bellagio right there and Cosmopolitan. And maybe basically, you know, we'd go in the room to shit, shower, and shave. Basically, was the was the whole sleep, shit, shower, and shave. Yep, those are the important things. You got those covered. The important things. Not even really the shaving is really not even that important. Well, uh, to shift gears, but not too hard, because you spent some time <laughs> in uh, Boulder City. Let's talk about Boulder, Colorado, yeah. for a minute. Oh, um, good Boulder, Colorado. Yeah. This is uh, Nick in Boulder uh, who wrote in. Says, "Hey, Scott and Brian, <clears throat> texting and regarding Thursday's TMS and Scott's weird parking lot encounter. So this has been two Thursdays ago. Yeah. Uh, this is the guy that said lost opportunity or whatever it was. Yeah." Anyway, he says... Squandered. Squandered, squandered that was the word. Yeah, squandered. Yeah. I always forget the damn word he used. As a jort lover, because the whole thing is he's wearing jorts, you know? Yeah. says, as a jort lover and a wearer myself, I'm 26 for additional context. You kids and your flat hats and your jorts. <laughs> right. Anyway, uh, I says, I think the guy in the parking lot might uh, parking lot might have been referencing the fact that Scott wasn't wearing jorts himself. So, therefore, squandered opportunity. Just a thought. Love the show. I considered that, like maybe his stylings, if you want to call them that, mm -hmm. were enough for him to point at me and say, because we're, uh, he looked like around my age. Mm -hmm. And he's, he's probably looking at you and saying, that guy could be wearing jorts. He could be in jorts. <laughs> Can you believe he could be, <laughs> but isn't? Could be enjoying the, the lack of. Uh, freedom that I that I'm experiencing right now by wearing some. He's somehow chosen jorts. not to be in jorts. Yeah, unbelievable. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. thank Jeez. you uh, for your theory, Nick. I don't think I buy it, but I, I appreciate it nonetheless. <laughs> All right, uh, we're gonna do a little bit of news this morning before we uh, kick things off. Here you go. Here's this. It's time for the news, and it's brought to you by. Who played the prologue for Final Fantasy 16 on the stream last night? Well, Scott did. That's who. Check out the archive and see what all the fuss is about at frogpants.tv. Yeah, I think that game may have been the final straw that converted me into a Final Fantasy fan. And it's only really? the demo. It's like a two-hour demo. It's basically the prologue to the game, so your progress is yeah. saved for the, for the full game. Yeah. I went into that thinking... I'm not going to suddenly become a fan, but this demo's here. Let's give it a shot. John won't shut up about Final Fantasy all the time. I'm like, all right, fine. And wow. I've been playing some old stuff on my Ambernick and just kind of, you know, feeling a little better about that whole space. But, man, that thing was so epic. That two-hour prologue was so good, yeah. I immediately pre-ordered the game. And we'll play it on Thursday when it comes out. So there's that. Wow, very cool. Didn't expect it. All right. PS5 it's owners rejoice. You got yourselves a little bit of, a, of an exclusive there until they put it on PC. But uh, Is there a lot of going into a city and talking to every single person in the city? Um, and finding out there is that? a lot of story, but there isn't a lot of like go to the city and talk to everyone. Like Remember in the old games, you did a lot of that. You go to a, a place and you just like, yes. well, I better go talk to everyone I see. So every I get single person walking around. I mean, I hate, I hate even doing that in Zelda. It's like, oh, Kakariko City. Boy, I sure hope more rings fall from the sky. Oh, <laughs> let's, 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 it's told God. more through kind of chatter um, okay and this is just the prologue so who knows i can't speak to the full game it's a much bigger game than that yeah um but it's mostly just like you walking by and you hear some lady going i can't believe the paper paper what really imp impressed me so far is most of these games are japanese and then localized to english for us right and so they come off a little weird and a little strange and you know japanese yeah. to english is always a fun time there's some charm in that. I, I'm not. I'm not bashing it. It's just a little off-putting sometimes, and the the can seem cheesier than it's meant to be, or you know those sorts of things. This is the opposite of that. They built this game around the English, uh, the English dub or the acting, and are actually encouraging Japanese fans to play the game in English with Japanese subtitles. 
because they designed it with English speakers in mind. Mm. Really? And as okay. a result, it sounds good. Like these people sound like freaking actors and they're like not actual, going actual real. Yeah, they're not, not going just uh, 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 like none yeah. of that. It's just like really good really good acting. That really sold I may me have to make it to the way the womb. <laughs> And look, I love some of that cheese. I put up a video about this. I love some yeah. of the cheese that comes with it. Yeah. But this is not that. This is like Game of Thrones y kind of level sort of fantasy so far. Anyway, I really like it. So I'm not saying anyone should do anything. I'm just saying it converted me and I'm freaking can't wait for Thursday now. Cool. Uh yeah, cool. all right, let's move on to a story or two here. We got the giant asteroid. Um yesterday would have been the day for us all to die, but it didn't happen. <laughs> a tight oh, if only William Tapley, tap, oh. tapping, tappy, tapley. tapley. William Tapley. tapley. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Could, well, be look, could be around to predict uh, when we were going to die. He would have predicted this day too. That's right. Well, he still could have. He's he's alive, William Tapley. Who are you talking about? He, oh, not William Tapley. That's Third Eagle. That's who's third the eagle. guy? Sir, who was the guy? It was. Uh, oh, uh, the one we talked about years ago. It was um, an ing. It was. It was. He died, and his last name was a was a verb. Uh, <sighs> not Tapley. What was that guy's name? Harold Camping. Camping. Yo, that's why I was thinking something tapping. I was <laughs> combining my 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 eagles because that guy's probably an eagle of the apocalypse as well. <laughs> oh, it's this guy here. I'll play an Harold old. Camping. Here's an old clip. No, no interviews. No, no, no interviews. No interviews. Hey, uh. all right. <laughs> yeah, no, 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 interviews. no interviews. Although I'm tempted to keep talking, but then I say, uh, and then I say, no interviews, no interviews. <laughs> yeah, that guy was wrong. Yeah, he. That's what I was, I was thinking about. That's who would have predicted the, uh, you know, the latest, yeah, this uh, thing. But it didn't do yeah. anything. Well, it did. I mean, it did what it did, but it, it didn't hurt anybody. A massive asteroid the size of 84 orcas. This is when you know we're not good at measuring things. <laughs> uh, <laughs> 84 orcas. This uh, the asteroid in question has been designated 4885 or 453 1994 XD. It was discovered in 94, okay. according to the Center for Near Earth Object Studies or CNEOS. 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 Love it. NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratories, where they did this. Despite the initials, that has nothing to do with the XD emoticon <laughs> uh, some users use on their phones. Thank you, uh, J Post. Yeah, <laughs> thanks. Also, they had to go to the length of saying. Some older users of SMS and instant messaging may recognize. <laughs> Are they wearing a curved dad hat? I don't know what they're talking yeah, about. Right, exactly. Uh, the asteroid is also one of three set to pass the Earth on Monday, and his arrival only heralds the passing of another larger one last week. A whale of an asteroid. Now, big, uh, see how big is the asteroid coming toward Earth? NASA estimates uh, this one as much as 830 meters in diameter. It's pretty big. Wow. But I didn't. It wasn't close enough to do anything. So, okay. So if you felt it, didn't, didn't you dealt change it. the the uh, the Earth's rotation in orcas. No. Did, 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 were there orcas on the uh, in the water looking up at this thing, going, oh, "That thing is about uh, forty five Volkswagens." Well, when they haven't been busy uh, destroying people's yachts, they've been up. They've been nice to the sky. <laughs> ramming, <laughs> ramming yachts. I read the dumbest oh, the article. Orcas. I read the dumbest article that said. The headline the was, rooting. yeah, stop rooting stop for the rooting orcas. For the They're orcas. not our friends. I'm like, I don't think they care whether they root for them or not. Right, exactly. You root okay. for them if you want. It will make zero difference to the orcas. Yeah, everybody, let's say everybody in the world, if they were rooting for orcas somehow, suddenly stopped. Yeah. It won't matter. Wouldn't it doesn't change matter. the behavior of the orcas. The orcas aren't saying, oh, look at all the likes I got for this one. Yeah, what a load of load. Of yeah. load. Uh, a dead woman. Dude. A dead woman uh -huh. found breathing in a coffin. This actually has oh. an update to it because she died again. <laughs> oh, oh boy. So it's a happy and a sad story. Well, this is what happened. In the city of Babahoyo. Yeah, Babahoyo. I don't know where that is. Uh, let's see. Does it say? Ecuador. Ecuador, okay. Uh, declared Bella Montoya, age 76, dead following a suspected stroke. She was placed in a coffin and taken to a, a funeral parlor where relatives held a vigil before her planned burial uh, when after about five hours she opened the coffin or they opened the coffin uh, to change her clothes ahead of the funeral and the woman gasped for air they were like oh shit see this is why I think we you ought to be doing it the way we do it down here which is well, or up here I guess which is 
they have a whole process. You don't just go straight from, oh, mom died in bed this morning, put her straight in the coffin. Right, right. Like, oh, we happen to have this coffin just handy. Put her in. Yeah, Load no, in. you go through a process. You verify death. You do that so that you don't have weird shit like this happen. She ended up dying, though, later. <laughs> I am curious about what the, you know, there is a process, and I don't doubt that they do a lot of stuff to make sure they listen to the heart and all that sort of thing. Well, but first of all, we but we embalm them, right? We we full on like gut gut their guts. Like pull and, out their only if they're getting viewed at a funeral. I think you only need to do the embalming, can't you? Oh, maybe I don't know. Can I don't go? know. I, I think that that I, I I I absolutely could be talking out of my ass like usual. Um, <laughs> but I thought that the embalming was only if there was going to be a viewing. If they're going to, if you're going to get uh, cremated, they don't worry about any of that. Yeah. If I was I'm trying to think, if I was to die and just say, hey, I just want to go straight to the ground. Right into the urn. Put me right, oh, okay. Put me right into the brown. Or even mix. to the urn. Yeah. Like, yeah. Can, can they just do that <laughs> without doing any other work? You're just done? I think so. I, th I think so. I think they just take you right from, uh, Right from your your deathbed, <laughs> roll you onto a, I think a wheelbarrow, maybe one of those uh, radio flyer wagons. Oh yeah, that's what and I want. They, <laughs> they, they uh, tow you to the because uh, I'm crematorium. About, I'm big and gangly, so put me in a wagon. That's a great idea. They Have take me all off your clothes, out. then they put you on the uh, the little uh, the wheelie thing that goes into the uh, the giant oven yep. and uh, turn yep. it on. Yep. I've seen I've seen movies. Yeah, I've seen I watched a few Dead Light, or I watched uh, Six Feet Under. Sure, we know what's up. We know what's, what's going up? on there. Anyway, she's dead now, but uh, she did live, and then she died, and then she lived, and then she died. Oh man, what a bummer! Real bummer. Uh, all yeah. right, I'll tell you what's not a bummer: taking a break and having some friends on. They're going to talk about their uh, relatively cool things that they're working on. That'll be Bill and Bobby coming up soon. But after that, uh, who knows what'll happen? Before that, though, we got to play a song, and I know Brian has dutifully been working on a rad selection of songs this week. So, Brian, I what do we have today? Have. Yeah, let's go to Miami, Florida, to Limited Fanfare Records, and a. Uh, a band that is releasing their first bit of new music in the last two years. Since 2021, these guys haven't released anything, but they've got a new single called Machine. It's produced by uh, Torch guitarist Jonathan Nunez. Uh, they're going to be on tour. They're actually already on tour. June 15th through July 2nd. And uh, Palomino Blonde, uh, uh, who uh, Iggy Pop called them one of Miami's brightest lights. Wow. And that's high praise because he's uh, he's a real wild one, that Iggy Pop. Uh <laughs> And he's a passenger, but I, I guess that's it. Sure. Uh, this is their brand new single. It's called Machine. Here is Palomino Blonde. If you got it in your minds that I'm going to be cooperating with you, then your minds must be up your asses with the rest of your heads. Hey, Gina, you eat with that mouth? A toaster is just a death ray with a smaller power supply. And welcome back to the show. Hey, Brian, tell me who that was one more time. Sure. I'm going to tell you, that was Palomino Blonde, brand new music from Palomino Blonde, a single called Machine. Ooh, I like a good machine. Machine. Check them out on tour right now. They're yeah. out there touring for you. No harm in that. Nope. No harm in that at all. Nope. Nope. All right. Bill Duran coming in, coming in hot. I'm going to give yep. him uh, his shot. He will not miss his shot. At being hot. <laughs> Not There's good. still is something shot, wrong, shot. isn't there, Bill? Hey, Bill. Uh, your mom would call you William. Maybe. I don't know. Willie? I don't know what she did. <laughs> Willie, come to dinner. I don't, I don't want to assume anything, but, um, you know, Jamie, Willie. It makes sense to put the I on there. Uh, anyway, or the Y. Hey, it's uh, Bill Duran. He's coming on the show uh, straight from uh, PunishProps.com to talk about the world of making. Bill, it's always good to have you here. Welcome back. Good to be here. You know, uh, for like a year, I had a, a job where I didn't know anybody. Mm. I, I taught at a high school, and I tried on the name Will. Yeah. So now there's like three people out there who who that's that's what they think my name is. Will Duran. Yeah, really, Will Duran. Yeah. Will, yeah. Will Duran. It's kind of fun to yeah. say Will Duran. Yeah. Yeah. yeah like actually. Yeah. yeah. Will Duran. It sounds like Dalaran or Alderon, but Will. It's a planet in Star Wars. Will Duran. Rebels. They have a base on Will Duran. <laughs> yeah. Will Duran. <laughs> I know the rebels are there. Go to Will Duran. Please don't. Please don't blow it up. It's Will Duran. That's amazing. Uh, 
<laughs> I, I so realized, I made something. I realized Brian's never done a Princess Leia before, and I'm, I'm yeah. kind of glad. I'm kind of glad. Oh now. yeah, yeah. It's it's not even. It really was not even an attempt at a Carrie Fisher uh, impersonation. It was really just. It was, it was the only woman's voice I could do that isn't. Brian. Oh yeah. Time I think all of them. You should just do that for every single. Uh, every woman. every woman's impersonation. Yeah, every woman's Tina. impersonation should yeah. be Tina's uh, thing that you do. Okay. All right. All anyway, right. hey Bill, you're here. Let's do it. What do you got today? Inspire us. Make us feel creative. Yeah. What you doing? What you make? What you make? Uh, I made a new video. It's been a hot minute. Um, and in fact, in the video, I talk about why we've we haven't made new YouTube videos in a little while. I'll get to that in a moment. But the thing I made. I've got this proton pack, this Ghostbusters proton pack, mm -hmm. and it's a con continual work in progress. Uh, so the way that the neutrona wand mounts to the pack, right, so that you can slide it on and off, the previous method for that was a metal Dixie cup holder <laughs> thing, right? Yeah. Which uh -huh. is actually a common method for doing this with proton packs. The thing is, and I, and I demonstrate in the video, it binds. It's not easy to pull the the wand off and when you're trying to bust ghosts you want to look cool right and if you're struggling to get your proton pack wand off yeah. you don't look cool and the no. ghosts make funny that'll get you fired ray ray will <laughs> yeah. pull you into the conference room and have a talk with you about this but oh, yeah. Slim yeah. slimer will ghosts. slime you up and down before That's you get right. the thing out yeah. totally you want to be able to quick draw that wand yeah so uh i built a new one Based on a design, there's a website called gbfans.com. They sell Ghostbuster parts, and they they have one that's called a V-mount. Uh, so I built my own. Uh, theirs has this aluminum mount that goes on the pack, and then a bent steel sleeve that goes on the wand. And I don't have uh, the tools I need to make the, the steel part, so I made mine out of layers of aluminum. That's cool. uh, I did a, a little bit of measuring and designing on paper. I drew it all out on paper ahead of time. We talked about this a couple of weeks ago. How drawing is so useful still. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I call it pad, pencil assisted drawing. Oh, I like that a lot. Uh -huh. yeah, yeah, yeah. You're a pad nice. expert. That's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and then I drew it in actual CAD. <laughs> I, drew, I drew it in Fusion 360 <laughs> yeah. uh, to get it just right. And uh, I used my CNC machine to cut out the parts out of aluminum. So I've got a, a Shapoko CNC machine. It's got a trim router in there that it uses to cut all the parts. Uh, and I had a couple of thicknesses of aluminum to use so that the parts wouldn't be a perfect fit. I wanted there be there to be a little bit of a gap so that it's uh, not perfectly snug. That was kind of the problem before. Uh, so I cut all the parts out of aluminum. Uh, the difference being that um, uh, the some of the aluminum parts needed to be layered and then screwed together uh, instead of having that bent steel part. So I uh, planned all that, planned all the holes to. Um, uh, to drill out and then I had to of course tap some of those holes for screws I had to do some countersinking uh, lots of fun metal work working with aluminum do you have I got a question about your I have a question about your your legal pad here that you've got mm -hmm. out yeah yeah why is is it, is it split in half from a larger pad so I <laughs> funny story so <laughs> I 3d printed a uh, a thing to hold my my legal pads yeah. and pencils and stuff like a nice nice desktop holder. Yeah. Uh -huh. um, and I and I made the hole for the legal pads a little too small. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. So I uh, that legal pad went through a table saw yeah. <laughs> to make it a little slimmer. Okay. I, I love it. I love the it, not a very clean cut either. No, no, no. it's pretty pretty ragged. But I I think I I think I love that more. I love the idea yeah. that you'd had to kind do that. of yeah yeah. I love stuff like yep. that. The little, and it's I don't the little even details. Have the, that holder anymore. Uh, I don't. I don't know what happened to that. I <laughs> think I threw it away. <laughs> yeah, sometimes you just go back to what you know. It's all good. But and yeah. and uh, also, I did that to like ten legal pads. And uh, did you stack so, them I, when you did it? You did a whole stack of legal pads oh, all at yeah, once. Yeah, yeah, just fed them right through. Good oh, Lord. that's cool. Yeah, you should um, do a whole video so on that. Anyway, all of my legal pads will look like that for the next decade. <laughs> yeah, you know what? That's good. That's a good. That's a good legal pad size, actually. Right now, I did that with a, uh, uh, with a, um, 
a grid pad, cut it right down the middle. I did I did an exacto knife, so it was a cleaner cut, but it took me about uh, half an hour. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just like shoo, 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 oh, shoo. Yeah. Probably while I was watching a movie or something. Because I mm-hmm. like a good, tall, narrow grid pad for like my to-do list so like, yeah. i have a lot of yeah. lot of room to cross stuff off yeah did you uh good. did you uh did your hand hurt after that because i yes. cut out my yeah i cut out my a set of wolverine claws out of styrene <laughs> <laughs> that way <laughs> just sitting in front of the tv and uh this is before i had a bandsaw so i cut it all out by hand with an exacto and boy yeah. did my hand hurt after that <laughs> yeah it's uh <laughs> I love that you're playing uh, Marvel Snap while waiting for this thing to cut yeah. your stuff. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> That's great. That's fantastic. Yep. Need, to, oh, need nice. to babysit the machine. Yeah. Uh, takes which, a while. By the way, yeah. I hit uh, what's it called? Omega for the first time yesterday. Oh really? Was that seventy? Yeah. Eighty? Eighty. Eighty. Damn. Nice. I have never. I think the highest I've gotten is diamond. So I need to up my game. I know I this is just get high evolutionary. So. Bill. Bill. Oh. I know. Insta win basically is what that yeah, is. Yeah, I insta lose to that all the time. <laughs> <laughs> I know that this is um, probably a total non sequitur here, but I have to at least say this since I haven't seen you since then. I watched the entirety of the Microsoft Starfield event, and there's oh, some stuff yeah. in that Starfield event. All I could think about was you and making all that shit. That's all I yep. could think of. Yeah. You probably I saw pre- stuff, right? You probably saw things in there and you're like, oh, I'm making yes. that. Yeah. I pre-ordered the watch mostly because it comes in a case with a really cool opening mechanism. Right? Yeah. Yeah, that's what got me. The watch was barely yep, any yep. of it. It was that case it comes in, and I went, mm-hmm. oh, okay, maybe now I want it. Sold. $300? Okay. Here's, take all my <laughs> Here's money. Here's my $300. All right, sorry. I didn't mean to derail this. Uh, back no problem. To, back to Proton fixing. Proton pack. So, yeah, I cut all these parts out of aluminum and, and mounted them all to my pack and wand. Uh, and it works great. It's a little loose, a little wiggly, but I'm okay with that because it's easier to take off and put on. Uh, and hoping, hoping I can drag this whole thing to Dragon Con this year. Oh, that's your, that's your thing this year. Cool. Yeah. We'll Um, see. It's getting the proton pack to Atlanta is going to be a thing, but we'll figure it out. I was going to ask. So when you have to move, we've talked about this a little bit before, but when you have to move something like that, something big and gnarly and that the TSA is definitely going to stop you with, right? Is it better well, to just mail it to yourself sort of thing? I've done or? that. I've mailed things. I've mailed things to Dragon Con. Yeah. Uh, but this, I think I will put in my checked luggage. They will probably open and inspect it, um, but it's probably not the first Proton Pack they've seen get mailed to Atlanta or get get cargoed to Atlanta or yeah. whatever. Yeah. Uh, they definitely, not. it's not going to be a carry-on. It's too big to be carry-on. Right. <laughs> it wouldn't allow that. Yeah. So yeah, checked it- luggage shouldn't be a problem. I've, done all sorts of space guns and weird stuff in my check luggage and worst thing happens is they leave me a little note saying they, they took a peek yeah and, and that's fine you know yeah. take, take, oh, yeah. take a peek uh, but I bet they're used to that on that side it's just getting out of Seattle <laughs> you know what I mean like, sure. like leaving is probably trickier than going because yeah. I, I don't know why I just feel like Atlanta and Dragon Con they, they have an agreement kind oh of. sure sure yeah. I'll sometimes leave a note in my luggage too, just say, "Hey, just you know, so you know, this is my livelihood and something I care about very much, and I appreciate you taking good care with it." Yeah, um, that's yeah. good. That's good karma. I like that. Mm-hmm. Uh, sure. So, how, so are you? So now you're wearing the proton pack. Can yep. you go? Can you take your arm and just go shing like Ray, and it's oh, out? Oh yeah. <laughs> Putting that's... it back on is still kind of a problem. It's because it's hard to see and it's kind of far back. Maybe if I practice, I'll be able to nail it. Yeah, but um, but I what I do want to do is add a belt hoop loop, a belt hook on the on the wand, so that I can just sling it on my belt um, when I'm walking around. Oh, that's, that's a, a great pretty, idea. Another pretty common thing to do. Sure. So yeah. you're telling me real life isn't like uh, Cloud Strife, where he can just put his giant sword on his back without looking. <laughs> that's. Real life is much more difficult than that. Okay. In fact, the, I don't believe there's a single scene in Ghostbusters where they ever show them putting their wands back on their back. <laughs> oh, hey. It's true. Yeah, it's a really good point. Yeah. 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 Broke that news <laughs> right open there. I've never, I'm never trusting those guys again with any ghosts I've got to deal with. Uh, yeah. Well, awesome. And I'm looking at the final part of the video where you're holding this thing. You, you look you look legit. You're ready to Thank roll. Thank you. Yeah. Look ready to thing. bust some ghosts. Yeah. Uh, yep. So I mentioned before that we. it's been a while since we made a video on YouTube, and a, there are a couple things, and I dive into this in detail in this new video. Uh, but the main thing is, we've been Brittany and I have been building a new business, a new three D printing business, and I've dropped some hints here, 
here and there. So we kind of took the last couple of months to get the ball rolling on that. Uh, but the other thing, I, I, I again, I get into in the video is that, uh, boy, I got super burnt out making a crap load of prop videos. Mm. <laughs> like, uh, like a ton. And when we moved into our big shop um, and hired employees and everything, boy, that was stressful. That was uh, yeah, that was a real adventure. It's a lot. Yeah. yeah. And it, in fact, it was too much. Uh, I mean, for a while there, we were cranking a video out every single week. Some of those videos are like 45 minutes long. And when you think about it, that's like a feature film every two weeks. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and that that's literally just right. me and Brittany filming and, and Brittany editing. Like, that was too much for too long. And uh, it left a dent. It left a mark. I, I now have a pretty substantial anxiety problem. Oh, no. and it's definitely rooted, rooted in that. Now, I'm taking care of it. I talk to a therapist now every couple of weeks, and I and and he, I'm here to tell you, you don't have to be a burnt out YouTuber to talk to a therapist. I think that it is good for everybody. Sure, for real. Sure. Yeah. No, that's in, that's interesting to hear. I always wondered if that was a thing. Like people always say, how come you don't hire three people to work at do all your frog pants editing, all your prep, all your all your stuff? And my answer is because that stresses me the f out. Yeah. yeah. It's yeah. a lot because now you got other people you have to worry about. Now I understand that's how a lot of business works, and I totally get it. Sure, but I have delegate. If anything, yeah. though, I've done the opposite. I've worked too hard to not do that, but then, and mm -hmm. that's also got its own version of burnout. You know? Yeah, uh, so yeah. So you gotta find, if find you some form of balance. Yeah. Um, for me, I don't. I don't want to manage people. Don't yeah. want to do it. I don't like it either. And uh, yeah. when you have employees, you gotta do it. Yeah, and when your employees aren't getting along and it's not a big team, it makes a huge impact on everything you do. Yeah. Uh, and on top of that, when you're spending 60 plus hours a week making your YouTube videos, it's hard to find time to do those other things that you need to do. Yeah. It's, uh, uh, so, not... yeah, we we slowed way, way down. We uh, What's funny is we in 2019, we moved it to one video a month and that was still it was the same amount of work. We just made longer more complicated videos <laughs> yeah so uh when the pandemic hit that was the worst uh it was at like peak anxiety when the pandemic hit so we just kind of went underground for a while slowed down on everything started talking to a therapist uh and it's taken a couple of years to really figure out you know our place in all this and what we want to do uh oh and on, on top of it too I'm not complaining or anything, but uh, we also didn't make any money. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's Having a big a, part of it. That, yeah, that both big, adds to the stress and. Uh, <laughs> yeah, in hindsight yeah. too, it feels feels really bad knowing how much money we spent. The shop was really expensive. People are really expensive. Um, so yeah, we've been we've been slowing down, figuring out what works for us, and trying to recover our savings. <laughs> yeah, that'll um, that'll happen. That's cool though. I'm I'm, I'm stoked that you that you're also cool. making a pivot like that. Like, yeah, it's a, uh, well, that's it's a this, great this, way to refresh things. You know, make yeah. it feel fresh. The new and ready business, to go. Uh, the new business should be good. Um, it's de it's designed to make money for us. To I want to buy a house in Seattle. Turns out they're wicked expensive. Uh, so that's kind of part of the plan. We'll uh, have this new thing going. We're still going to be making prop videos, but they're going to be a little more informal, kind of like we used to make them, like you know, six seven years ago. Cool. Uh, so look forward to that. We're not going to stop making prop videos, but we do have a new thing coming, and more importantly, we are taking care of ourselves. It's good. Yes, that's very important. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do it, man. Get in that, that hot yeah. tub or whatever it is you have the equivalent of. Oh, um, yeah. <laughs> well, great. Uh, yeah, uh, uh, I already feel like you gave us bonus content, but is there a bonus link yeah. you'd like to share today? There sure is. Uh, this is a video from our buddy, the Craftsman. He's a puppet on YouTube that makes stuff, and uh, he's making injection molded toys. He got a he has an injection molder, but he got a newer, more fancy one. Is and is able to make injection molded toys right in his basement oh and they gosh. look great and he can make them en mass and it's so cool so uh, and he didn't the reason we start we started 3d printing so that we didn't need j injection molding anymore because it was such a <laughs> yeah. big factorial process but you're telling me he has shrunk that down to a thing he can just do no, oh no, yeah you, you use 3d printing to make the first one yeah use injection molding to make all the rest yeah. of it because yeah, cool. this machine can poop 
This can poop out a little figure, uh, like one figure every 20 seconds or something. It's so fast. Yeah. Well, a lot faster than my uh, printer can do Do you do get it. the awesome little army man seam on everything and all that? Oh, like, yeah. Definitely. Oh, man, that's so cool. That that's is actually cool. really cool. I love and it. And until I thought, now, these were, I thought these were little things you put air tags, Apple air tags in. Because <laughs> <laughs> they've got that open little face. It totally looks like it, yeah. Until now, this is the sort of thing, like getting the molds made is really hard, but um, you can see and see, uh, I could see and see a mold out of aluminum in my basement right now. I have the technology and the, huh. and the talent. Yeah. Yeah, so, that's the that's cool. the kicker here is the mold. That's it. Yep. Then yeah. you inject. So yeah, it was never about the injecting. Everyone can inject. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but making that so mold. Had, try try me. <laughs> he had some help. He had another YouTuber who does CNC uh, make the molds for him, and now now he can just crank them out, and those molds will last basically forever. Yeah, I was gonna say they're not really um, uh, unlike plaster or whatever. They're not made yeah. to degrade like that they'll go on and mm -hmm. go on and go on i oh, love it that's i love that it's really all cool. these different little little god they look like just 1970s figures and that's just a resin that's just like a little resin mold oh no is that metal that's metal um that, he one, uses, that one's metal but there's a couple yeah. that look like they're resin he's done it with uh silicone molds which are okay but not as good as the metal ones yeah metal will last you forever forever yeah exactly and i love that oh, these toys so cool. look like toys i would have been super into when i was a kid they look oh, like yeah. something you'd get out of a little turn the knob and get a mystery gacha toy. Yeah. Oh, know, perfect. Yeah. 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 You could have some real fun with. Don't, don't tempt me with this kind of stuff. I don't have time to learn this. <laughs> First, you got to do something with the clay that you took out. I know. I got this big that. blob of clay over here it's sitting yeah. right there. Oh. Tools are out. <laughs> Just waiting for me to yeah. go over there. Get, there's probably hair and dust in it. it. I got to get in there. All right. And that was funny enough. That was a Bill inspiration, even buying the damn clay. So. That's right. <laughs> That's right. Yes. Uh, well, Bill, as always, a pleasure to talk to you and uh, great stuff as always. Can't wait to do it again. It's Bill Duran, everybody. PunishProps.com. Punish Props on YouTube. Bill, have a great week, and we'll see you next time. See ya. Bye. Bye and that video for you audio folks can be found at QuickTMS.li. That's right. Now we go from Bob to Bob. Or, uh, sorry, we go from Bill. <laughs> you were so close. I was really close. We go You're from really Bill close. to Bob is what I was trying to say. And uh, let's do that now. There's still something wrong. That's isn't the wrong one. Science! <laughs> Bob is hungry. And the soup looks good. That's right. Get, don't get, your, get your Bills and your Bobs worked out, Johnson. Uh, yeah. Look who it is. It's Bobby Frankenberger joining us for a science segment that we like to do on Tuesdays. Talk all about the science, and uh, we love doing it. Bobby, welcome back to the show. How are you? I'm doing well. How are you? I'm fine. Every time Good. I log into Discord, it says you're playing Diablo 4. You're as hooked as we are. Nicely done. Well done. Oh, yeah. It, the Lilith got her claws in me this week, <laughs> for sure. <laughs> She'll do or that. Last week. It, yeah. How far in the story are you? Do you know how far you are? What act you I just in? finished Act 2. Okay. Taking your time, nothing so, wrong with that. Taking my time, yeah. Well, I just started in earnest a few days ago, really. Right. Um, level 30-something. <laughs> nice. So. Oh, you got your horse then. That's good. Do I? No, I don't. At 30, uh, you should I have your... Well, you have to do a quest to get it. So it's quest locked. So you may have... You're If you're only in Act 2 and you're level 30, you probably just haven't hit the quest yet. But as soon as you do, you're, yeah, you're, yeah. you're eligible. Yeah, um, I just finished Act Two. I'm I'm about to head out to start the quest for Act to start into Act Three. Yeah, it's uh, the horse is a game changer. It's really good. Mm. Anyway, well, I'm glad to hear that. Uh, Bobby comes on the show and talks about science. It's time to talk science. Why don't we do that? Let's uh, let's hear what you brought. What are we doing? Um, I've I wanted to talk about. So it's the summertime and science stuff slows down. You know, universities are. You know, this the grad students are not doing as much. And just it's the summertime is a little bit slower. So I thought, why not do something I've been wanting to focus on for a little. I've been spending a lot of time thinking about just critical thinking in general and how I can, you know, do my part to to help people be better critical thinkers. And I got to thinking about uh, something that I think is a great topic to talk about in, in the in that intersects with critical thinking and that is the placebo effect you guys are familiar with the placebo effect right oh, yeah. sure yeah, yeah. absolutely yeah. a great british band 
<laughs> is it a band? Placebo. There's a band called Placebo, yeah. Uh, oh, okay. They're... Yeah. Well, the placebo effect is how you feel after you listen to it. Exactly. Yeah. Yes. yeah. You feel like you heard some good music just then, but really you didn't. It wasn't very good. <laughs> right, fair. right. They're fine. Um, you placebo's were, you were told fine. that this would be good music. Yeah, and that was I was good told. Enough. That's the effect. Was, Don't oh, send oh, us yeah. emails. Placebo's fine. We know they're a, they're a fine band. Okay. Yeah. 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 Anyway. Um, but a lot of people like to invoke the placebo effect. That was air quotes if you couldn't hear that. Um, the placebo effect uh, as as being some sort of argument for why why some some thing or some treatment or some something that you do is useful even though it doesn't actually do anything right like well at least there's the placebo effect the placebo effect is doing something right right, right. you hear that a lot I'm sure you've heard that before right definitely have heard that before I've even yeah. had yeah. a personal experience uh, where I thought a thing was doing a thing that absolutely was not doing a thing it was years yeah. ago but yeah right right Al alternative medicine practitioners love the placebo effect for this reason because they'll say you'll you'll argue with them and say well homeopathy doesn't do anything like it's just water and and if you push them far enough into a corner a lot of times you hear well you know there's always the it's at least the placebo effect is a is an actual effect mm -hmm. it's a real thing so um which is a mis use and misunderstanding of what the placebo effect really is so i thought for everyone listening, what is really is the placebo effect and why is it misused and what is it really, right? So right. I thought we could talk about that. Right. I feel like that entire industry, the hom homeop homeopathy. My homeopathy. Saying, thank you. Thank you. Homeo. Homeopathy. Hom homeopathy. <laughs> all that stuff. Oh, I was closer than I thought. Um, <laughs> all of that, that sort of thing, they rely on this. Right. It's not just they like it. They freaking need it. If they didn't have the placebo effect, they have no business. <laughs> they have no sure, sure. no no yeah. trick. And the same thing could be said for not just medication or treatments uh, of a physical sort. Sometimes placebo effects are like, well, if you if you go to the oak tree and say these three words, uh, and then rub your face with dirt twice on the left cheek, and then <laughs> you know, like there's there's some kind of effect that comes out of that. It's the same right, same right. problem, same deal. They they need right. that to be a thing people go through. Elsewise, you have nothing. Right, you and know. and you would argue with him and say, well, rubbing your face on the tree doesn't actually do anything, right? Yeah. So um, why are you telling people to do this? And they they would say, well, well, they believe that it does something, and that has a placebo effect, and that has real effects. There's been research that shows that the placebo effect has real effects. So let's 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 pick it apart. Let's talk about what is the the placebo effect. Okay. The first thing to understand about the placebo effect is it's not a singular effect. It's actually it's it's almost a misnomer to call it the placebo effect singular right yeah because it's not it's a collection of um non-specific responses to uh to to getting some sort of a treatment or thinking that you're getting something real when you're not um it's it's but the point is that it's it's a collection of subjective responses that you have to things it's um it's most often confined it's most often and was originally really Maybe not originally. It's the placebo effect has been named for a very long time. I, I want to say even like Plato <laughs> talked about the, but I could be wrong about that. I'm not. I'm not going to say for sure. But it's at least hundreds of years people have referred to the placebo effect. Um, but uh, but it's often talked about in the context of clinical trials and clinical treatment, um, as being the part of a clinical trial when you're testing an actual medical treatment, the placebo effect is what's happening to those people who are not getting it. Yeah. Right? Um, so it's all, it's operationally defined as whatever is happening to the people who are not getting it. Um, so let's like, so, so to, to dig more into, to that context, cause it's, like I said, it's useful to understand why, why scientists actually talk about the placebo effect. So when you do treat patients, you're doing all sorts of stuff with them, right? right? That have nothing to do with the treatment. Right. Okay. This is a clinical trial. Clinical trials are different than like, like, um, say uh say like a lab trial because a clinical trial is done in a clinical setting you're giving people like actual people some sort of a treatment that you're trying to test right mm -hmm. and seeing if it actually helps right and you always um, give people is it that situation where you always give people the the sugar pill 
to to mm-hmm. to create your well that's the important thing right it's um is if you don't then so let's say you're giving them a pill let's say it's a cancer treatment of some kind and you and you're testing a drug and you want to see if this is going to improve outcomes in cancer patients well the the, it's a cancer patient. They're going to come into your office and they're going to talk to you about what's going on and you're going to give them some this this medi- you you have to be able to say is it the medication that's doing something or is it maybe something else, right? Right. Maybe uh, maybe they're coming in and and just being nice to them and treating them warmly or talking to them about their health. Maybe the fact that because they're in part of this trial, they're paying more attention to their health. Hmm. Um actually doing other actually, things that are improving yeah that are helping right it them. actually yeah. causes them to change their behavior because right. they're they're paying attention to things those are all the other things that have nothing to do with what you're you're testing right right so the only way to tease that out is to have this placebo group right this this non-test group that is that are getting uh, like you said Scott the sugar pill right? right like it's some some pill that's looks and and feels exactly like the medication, but it's not. It's and they're being told that it is. Like that's a that's a crucial part here is they think they are yeah, getting. There's the same all sorts thing. of ethical things that in how you have to set up the study. You have to tell everyone that they may get a sugar pill. A, the the sugar a pill. Or yeah. like there's a chance that they'll get one or the other. You have to inf- there's informed consent. You have to inform people that they're right. If they're part of this trial, they may not be getting an actual treatment. So but you don't tell anybody involved who's getting what so there's the there's the thought in their head that they might be getting something that is working right, right. Mm-hmm. but you that's how you do it so what you do is you have both groups that are getting treated exactly the same except one has medication in the pill one does not and then so you look at the group that did not get it and and you subtract out all the effects that they had because those are the effects that you could say that those are the things that happen because of all the other things going on that we just listed, right? Mm-hmm. And so what is the difference between those two groups? That's why we talk about the placebo effect in the context of clinical trials is because that's what you call all the things that happen to both of the groups. We just call you just say that's the placebo effect. That's that's them going through the motions and doing all these things. Th- those are the benefits that they're getting from all of that, right? Right. Um so importantly it's what what that kind of starts to tease out is that there are all these subjective things that can happen to you just by being treated nicely by other people right <laughs> or just by paying attention to your health this happens a lot in weight loss treatments it, there's tons of studies that show that just by paying attention to your weight you will often lose weight like right. even if you do nothing else if you just decide i'm going to start paying attention to it that's yeah that, i mean that's what that whole noom thing is based on is just logging the food you eat and so you start looking at it and saying wow i probably yeah. didn't need to eat that bag of skittles and you know yeah exactly i like it's funny that you bring up noom we're not talking about weight loss but um but i like noom because they're just honest about it right yeah. They're just like they're they're yeah. telling you. Yeah, if you just pay exactly. more attention to this, it's going to help you. Yeah, it's not <laughs> you probably do this yourself with a spreadsheet, but <laughs> yeah, yeah, they're not they're not promising some magic. They are actually giving you no. a practical yeah. thing. I do like yeah. that as well. I just I think it's a difficult business model because once you realize that, you can go, "Well, I can track what I eat and look I at it." I can just do it myself. I don't it's, have to pay. It's really for just the 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 tracking. I mean, yeah. they give you the they give you a bunch of like uh uh, tips and and uh articles about yeah it's a nice app too yes, like a really most part, usable I mean, app list- yeah 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 I, I agree yeah so anyway. so anyway so that's that's the whole idea is that you're you're paying more attention to things that are going on mm-hmm. now importantly so there have been a lot of studies that have been done on the placebo effect a lot of people who are who are making those arguments like well the placebo effect it's still in effect it's we can we can give them this sham treatment because they're still getting the placebo effect and they'll point to these studies that have shown that the placebo effect is a real thing people get real benefits from the placebo effect um and a lot of times they'll look at uh well to and to to dig into that we we kind of have to talk about how most people think that the placebo effect is all based on belief right Mm -hmm. um it's this idea that you have to believe what's happening right that you have to believe that you're getting something that works in order for the placebo effect to work. And so so people will point to these other studies because there have been studies that have showed that animals 
and babies, when they're in clinical trials, will show a placebo response. And they point to that and say that that means that the placebo effect is actually a real thing, right? Mm -hmm. um, and it's tricky. You, it's Those studies do show responses, but that's because it's not all about belief. Um, people think that it's it's just you have to believe what's happening, but you don't have to believe anything for the for a placebo resp response to actually happen. But that doesn't mean that it's it's because some magical thing is happening. That's what what uh, scientists will call the clinical trial effects. Again, paying attention to your health, you don't have to believe that you're actually getting anything. If even if you knew that you were getting a fake pill, but you had to go to the doctor the same as everybody else. <laughs> Every, uh, every month or something like that, you're paying closer attention to your health, yeah. right? You're doing other things that that would affect your health in a real way that have nothing to do with the, mm -hmm. the, the pill itself. There's also statistical effects that have nothing to do with any of that, which like one of them is called the regression to the mean, which is if you start to measure something about your health, then there's a really good chance because the the average, the mean, is a very specific point in a distribution, right? Mm -hmm. There's a really good chance that when you started measuring that you were not you you measured at a point that was not at the average. Mm. Over time though, you're going to tend to regress to that average. You're going to tend to drift back towards that average so you're going to see effects even if you've done nothing. <laughs> um because that's just how it works. That's just a a statistical effect of of taking measurements. Um, there's also what's called the self-limiting nature of diseases. So if you have a cold and you do anything, there's a chance that uh, after about a week, your cold's going to start to go away. Um, right. That's how colds work. Sure. Um, so, so anyway, that, so that's what the point is that the placebo effect is not just any one thing. When it's talked about, it's, it's a collection of things. It has nothing to do with, uh, um, the, you know, there, that, that that doesn't mean that it's some magical thing that's happening because you're taking a thing, right? Right. There's also, can you think of ethical problems with with telling someone, I'm going to keep having them rub their face on this tree because there's a placebo effect? No, there's a massive they, ethical really, problem. It's working for them. Yeah, yeah. My, yeah. I'll, I'll give you an example. I'll just say it. I don't care. She doesn't listen to the show. My mother-in-law yeah. used to take silver supplements. Okay. Okay. And it took me... A long time to get her to back down from that tr that 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 tree, back to the tree, um, because <laughs> that snake oil tree. <laughs> yeah, because at one point um, she was taking it all the time, was sure of of its effects, and was positive it was doing this whatever whatever the hell she thought it was doing for. Her. Mm. And I sent her a picture of that dude that was all blue from taking too much silver. Oh right, yeah. Yeah, you can have severe kidney effects too yeah. from taking. And he looked like a he looked like a freaking Smurf. It was horrible. And I sent that to her and I said, this is where you're headed if you keep increasing your intake of this stuff. Yeah, yeah. And that stopped her. Um, that's, well, good. That's yeah, good. she didn't want to it's turn heavy blue. Heavy metal poisoning is a thing. It's a real <laughs> right. thing. So, yeah. um, you know, but what I've found for the most part, when, it's, when people really buy into it, there's, you, don't change it, you don't change their mind. Yeah. So to yeah. answer your question, is there an ethical dilemma? Of course there is, because I believe the people who purvey this stuff know full well whether it works or not. They they may have tried even to convince themselves of whatever lie they're telling so they yeah. can so they can deal with it more so they can have the moral dilemma be a little less you know edgy for them. But at the end of the day the day they know 100% they know and they should feel bad that they do that shit. They should. Right. It's right. unethical yeah. as yeah. hell. It is like the height of unethicalness in my opinion. Right. Well, to me, remember we talked about the context of placebos being in clinical trials and how a placebo is defined, right? So to me, um, the reason it's unethical is because guess what other types of treatments have placebo effects in them? Real treatments, <laughs> you know? <laughs> like, like but this is what we just talked about. Like, you also get all those effects if you give people real treatments. <laughs> because so again, why they're not paying just, attention to their, yeah. 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 So why not also give them the real, real treatment? You know, <laughs> right. um, the FTC uh, agrees, by the way, <laughs> they argued a, a long time ago um, that uh, the placebo effects is not grounds for making medical claims. Um, I actually have a quote from them here. It's um, 
Judge Easterbrook in the Seventh Circuit Court of Appeals said, quote, like a sugar pill, it alleviates symptoms, even though there is no apparent medical reason. Since the placebo effect can be obtained from sugar pills, charging $200 for a device that is represented as a miracle cure, but works no better than a dummy pill, is a form of fraud. 100% um, so, agree with with yeah. Judge Westerfield. What was his name? Judge uh, Easterbrook. Easterbrook is on point. <laughs> he's not, he's my He's my new favorite judge. I like that guy. Yeah, so the FTC has put their foot down and said, look, the, uh, claiming that because this works because of the placebo effect is ju- is tantamount to fraud, so you can't do it. Yeah. Um, so yeah, the placebo effect. Um, it's it's just good to know to arm yourself with knowledge about that. So for when people try to to make that argument that the placebo effect is why this works, so it sh- it's fine. You yeah. Know? It's it's not really. So. I mean, I've I've had situations where you know. Somebody would say, oh, that sounds like a, whatever that is you're dealing with. It sounds like you're missing some vitamin D or I don't know. I can't even think of what it was, but it wasn't that, but yeah. it was something like that. And I said, oh, I'll try it, whatever. I'll, I'll try it. And the next day I had a great day. Yeah. And I knew that that great day could just be a good day. And there mm-hmm. was no mm-hmm. correlation between the two. But I get how the human brain goes, ooh, correlation. I must, it yeah. must be because I took that vitamin like somebody told me to do. And then when it doesn't reproduce itself the next time, then you start, you know, if you're not thinking critically, you start going, well, I'll just take more of it or I'll just, uh, maybe I took the wrong yeah. amount or maybe I need to take this brand of it. And pr- yeah, you exactly. Know it. You start making excuses for why it didn't work because that connection has already been made in your brain, right? Like, yeah. like in, and it's, um, when it gets made, it's it takes longer for that to kind of unlearn, so to speak. Mm-hmm. So you just make excuses. You already believe this thing, and that's also cognitive dissonance, right? You, the two to the two competing ideas in your head are that um, I'm a smart person who makes logical decisions, and I fell for this thing, <laughs> right? Mm-hmm. So in order to relieve that dissonance, you have to start coming up with something to explain it away, which is like, oh, well, I didn't do it quite the way, you know, like maybe something's a little off, you know, stuff like that. Right. So. Yeah. Well, that's fascinating stuff, though. I've always, yeah. always been interested in it as a thing. When it comes up, it's just kind of like, oh, yeah, right. We all think this is a thing. And I'm more, I, I guess I'm, in recent years, I've been more interested in how it's just sometimes mental placebos that have nothing to do with what you're taking. It's just right. what you're listening to or what you believe or, you know, there's a mm-hmm. big raging resurgence of um, VAC stuff going on right now on the internet that everybody's talking about because very prominent people are arguing about it. And it, and it once again, if you read the comments, you once again realize, oh man, you, you can go through the listing of placebo, 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 placebo. Nope, nope, mm-hmm. nope, nope. Critical thinker, not a critical thinker. Like you can just see this <laughs> happen in real time and it's, it can be, it can be overwhelming and frustrating, so I don't recommend actually deep diving into it. But, but, uh, but yeah, humans are weird, man. If we, if also, we, if we automatically knew a thing was bogus, mm-hmm. would it make life simpler, or would it make it weirder? Like I always think about that. If if you knew everything that was either fake, fraud, or over over uh, promoted as being able to do a certain thing, would that make life harder to navigate or easier to navigate? You mean just if you knew it, like if it was a superpower? Well, the reason I'm saying this is because we're, this isn't like a decision we made 50 years ago. This is, this is people and the way their brains think over lots of adaptation and evolution. Mm -hmm. So there must be a reason why we are susceptible to this. It's because, is it part of our survival instinct? It's like, well... I don't know if it really helps me or not, but boy, it's not going to hurt anything to try. It, all of these things, do they all just lend to that? Well, I need to survive, and so I'm going to use as many real and fake things as I can to survive. Mm-hmm. Well, it, um, yes, I think it is the survival part of it. Is it, it benefits you more as a, if you're just thinking about you as an animal, it probably benefits you more to be a quick adopter and quick learner um, than it does to be... Uh, to be very suspicious of everything right 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 um so so that's the that's the the survival benefit yeah, of doing that i, I can see that yeah, yeah. i don't know but we a... don't need to do that anymore because we live in a society yeah that's right <laughs> we've learned some things uh, that's right so keep keep learning everyone that's today's lesson 
Uh, excellent, Bobby. As always, fun to talk to you about this stuff. Tell us what's coming up on uh, this week in science. <laughs> this week in science. <laughs> <laughs> all, around all around science is what i meant to say um uh, I'm, sh- I'm sure that this week in science podcast is pretty good too um but, hosted, uh, that actually is hosted by bill i don't know if yeah. you know that but, uh, i think that's <laughs> actually uh kiki um i always forget her last name dr kiki basically oh dr kiki yep. does that that's she's, right yeah we yeah. have her on tms of she's, course. She's, or, I, mean, I mean not tms and her antp yeah she's great yeah nothing wrong with she's her great. no not not not, not the, dr nikki not uh no me. no no not the contestant but we had dr oh, kiki right. on as a yeah. expert yeah, as she a, was, a, she expert, was our yeah. podcast now expert. Gonna, now he's going to start calling uh, Nikki Ackerman's Dr. Kiki. <laughs> Kiki Ackerman. <laughs> Kiki, Kiki Nickerman. Nickerman. Yeah. <laughs> yep. And she's going to make a, a fake sheep that's all about placebo effect. I can't wait. It's going to be great. <laughs> now anyway. that we spent all this time talking about that other podcast, I'll talk about mine. Um, <laughs> what, what do you got? <laughs> the uh, All Around Science. Yeah, me and Maura um, host that. Uh, we this The episode that came out yesterday, we talked about the color blue. And why it's so rare to find the color blue in nature, which it is. If you look around, most things are not. Blue is hard to find. And when you do find the color blue, almost always, almost always, it is not actually blue. Right. So. Like water, ocean, sky, it's not really blue. With sea, yeah. it is blue, but there's a lot going on there. And then once in a while, I but see even, a flower. Even um, blue jays, bluebirds. The blue morpho butterfly, they're not actually blue, wow. um, even though they look blue. What about, um, oh, I was trying to think, what what fictional character has blue blood, and I couldn't think of anybody. Uh, uh, doesn't uh, Spock? Does oh, he's green. He's green, yeah. I yeah. don't know. But it's always then, green. But, it, but, it, right. but is it real? Green-blooded Klingon. <laughs> Uh, all right. Well, this has been great, as always, Bobby. Uh, thank you for hanging out with us. We'll see you next time right here on TMS. Be bye good. Bye. Bye. Now. bye. Let's see if this breaks anything. Nope. We're good. Tom Selleck has blue blood. That's what I've heard. Him and the uh, the, the lesser Wahlberg, they both have blue blood. That's right. Exactly. Yes. My wife loves that show. I don't like it. Um, all right. That's it for today's show. Quick outro uh, text from Joshua in Indiana. He said, this is for TMS. I was listening to TMS 2467, and you guys were talking about how Brian had never had surgery before. Up until December of 2022, I would brag that I had never broken a bone, had to have surgery, or ever had stitches. That all changed December 18th. I had a minivan fall off a jack, and I broke four bones in my foot. I ended up having to have some surgery on the 30th of December to put four screws and surgical steel plate into my right foot. Love the show, though. Joshua. I think his warning there, or the lesson here is, one day, Brian will have a catastrophic thing that will cause him yes, to have to have exactly. a bunch of surgeries. No, I guess. here's the lesson. It's dumb to have streaks <laughs> and to care about them. <laughs> it's dumb. <laughs> Bragging about never having broken a bone, it's dumb because it'll happen at some point. Oh, yeah, no, but see, that is kind of the fun part, right? Like, I haven't barfed since 05, <laughs> but I'll barf one day. I know I will. Yeah. Like, it's coming. Yeah. There's nothing There's nothing. And how about- will you feel that day besides the barfing? Well, you'll feel like I'll, oh my streak is over this 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 uh, ad, uh completely unnecessary streak that I've been maintaining. Well, that would be fun because the next day on TMS I get to tell everybody and say, you "Guys, finally the streak is broken." Like that's all I mean, the fun. Everything it is. is fun content for the show. Yeah, that's that's main, yeah. my main motivation for ninety percent of my life. So that's right. Yeah, uh, but anyway, oh. uh, Joshua. I am sorry that minivan fell on you for oh real. Oh my god, no kidding. That's the worst part of this is the heck with the streak, but Yeah. And if you hear minivan, imagine if you it was think, a maxi van? Oh right. my gosh. And if you hear minivan, you think, oh, that's not that big. It's just it, tiny. It's a, a giant car. Minivan. It's a car. Yeah. I don't you're care thinking if it's about a, uh, it Yeah, be. your grandson. Oh, little it's just a little minivan. How could that uh, hurt anybody? I don't care if it's a Le Car or some tiny Yugo or whatever. <laughs> it's still gonna hurt, you know? Mini mini Cooper. Oh. Oh. Uh, anyway, thank you, Joshua. If you like, like to send texts like this, and uh, uh, you can even leave voicemails there. It's up to you. But uh, you can use the number 801-471-0462 or email us, uh, themorningstream at gmail.com. All right, we're going to get out of here. A quick reminder, we're supported by your good graces, dear listener. Patreon.com slash TMS is the place to do it. Do you want art in the mail? Do you want other cool monthly benefits as well as pre-show content every day? I know you do. If you do... Mm-hmm. then patreon.com slash TMS is your friend. That is going to do it for today's show. Hey, Brian, let's play music yeah. before we leave. That was what me do you counting, think? by the way, as you listed all the things, all the reasons to become a patron. There are so damn many. I don't have enough fingers 
to tell you all the good reasons. Well, then to I'm going to AI trained. generate you next time, and then you'll have oh, all the fingers. Oh, you'll have you enough need. fingers. Finally, yes. Yep. Anyway, uh, I, could, I could count the 34 fingers on my hand on one hand. Why AI is such a great <laughs> idea. Uh, Joshua H wrote in and said, uh, since this request is for a Monday, and there should be two Brian's on today. Ha, psych. <laughs> it, was for, it was for yesterday. Dear Boot, Scoot, and Boogie, but the the two B's and an S. I get it. It was very clever. Today marks the end of my 40th trip around this big ball of burning gas we call the sun and the beginning of my 41st. Oh, good Lord, birthday. Let's party. I don't know why that other thing played. That was weird. Why is it doing that? You know what? That's a bug. You're supposed to be able to grab stuff and move it without it playing and it I yeah. Don't know why it oh, if you drag it, it it, uh, it used to That's not, fine. or sometimes still doesn't. Like if I move this, hold on. Yeah, it didn't play. If I move it again, I'll try it a third time. Yeah, I did it a third time. It's okay. just a little. Weird. It's a little. Just, fid- a little uh, fiddly. A little fiddly. Uh, yeah. Lame. Uh, Joshua continues. Uh, my request today is a cover of the classic Phil Collins song "In the Air Tonight," performed by State of Mind. Love the show, though. Joshua in Indiana. Uh. Okay, came out last year. Happy to play this for you. Uh, this came out last year uh, as a single. That was released by State of Mine. I just M-I-N-E. realized it's the same Joshua in Indiana that wrote our our text. Same guy. Oh, really? The the uh, <laughs> Joshua H from kidding. Indiana. Yeah. Anyway, didn't Mr. plan that. Guy. Had no idea. I, I I I did not pay attention to his name. How funny is that? Yeah. All right. Well, it's a double shot. It's a double shot Tuesday twofer for <laughs> Joshua H. <laughs> Be color 18, give us the phrase that pays, and we'll play your Phil Collins song. Uh, here is State of Mind and In the Air Tonight. All right, that'll do it for us. We'll be back tomorrow with a Wednesday edition of the show. Will you come back for that? Of course you will. Thanks for listening. We'll see you then. Get more at frogpants.com. Ah, it seems that David here has a good idea. Oh. Oh. Well, then David gets all the winnings. All right. Hey, Brian! <laughs> <laughs>